Well, I think this might give away uh, how long I've been in the industry. And and yes, I've been an IT geek since uh, my teenage years and, and did play a number of video games growing up uh, from starting out on the Apple IIe and all the uh, the text to, to very primitive video that would come from those. But then, of course, as the PC came around and evolved, uh, I would play some of those games. And some of my earliest recollections of those games that were absolutely addicting were those first-person uh, shooter games, uh, they, specifically Duke Nukem and then this game Doom. And I remember playing Doom just... I, I knew it was getting bad when I would go to bed and I would dream that I'm going down those corridors fighting the the monsters. And we we uh, we actually took those games. Uh, I was working for a uh, hospitality company at the time, a very large one, and uh, we had had a networked version. And this is very early days when you, two players could play against each other on the same level. So we got right. this game going uh, after hours, and we're we're playing this, and just amazed that two people were able to coexist in the same virtual environment, right? And then uh, I'd never forget, one of our operators comes running out of the data center and said, all the systems are going down because the network is having so much congestion. And that's when I realized these games do not play nicely on corporate networks. So that pretty much uh, put an end to my gaming after that little experience. Um, yeah. You know, back then it was just uh, working. I was more on the system operations side of the house. So just making sure the infrastructure was up and running uh, for, again, a hospitality system that was nationwide. And we had all the data centers uh, throughout the uh, throughout the United States. And yeah, so that's how I kind of cut my teeth on security and availability. <laughs> So yeah, I originally from Baltimore and have kind of been working my way south ever so slowly. So after graduating from Towson University with a computer science degree, did some DOD work for about a year, realized that type of work wasn't for me, uh, went into the hospitality industry for 10 years or so, a little less than 10 years, and said, okay, uh, this is interesting, but what else is out there? And that's when I had an opportunity to go into financial services for an uh, $18 billion mutual fund company down towards the DC area. So again, slowly working my way down uh, down south. And so worked there for a number of years and thought that maybe this was gonna be where I, I finish up my career doing financial services. But then an opportunity came to work in healthcare. So I moved from, uh, from financial services into healthcare for George Washington University's health system. Uh, spent a very fast and furious two years there, learning everything I could, drinking from the garden hose that is healthcare IT, uh, learning not just how to secure the infrastructure, but how how healthcare works from a IT perspective, and really just fell in love with being able to help people and seeing really the difference that comes from from doing health IT. Uh, you know, the difference between protecting people's money, I always like to say, versus protecting people's health. So right. with that and armed with uh, the amazing experiences that I got out of GW, when the opportunity came to come work for Carillion Clinic in Roanoke, Virginia, I'll be very transparent. I knew nothing about Roanoke or Southwest Virginia, but it looked like a compelling opportunity in a beautiful area. So wife and kids, we packed it up and moved down here and haven't looked back. It's been a, an amazing experience these five or so years. Happy to go a little into a little more detail. So again, I spent um, probably the better part of 15 years in financial services and that saw that grow from, I was with the uh, mutual fund company that was the first to offer online access to customers for a, a small little mutual fund company. That was pretty impressive that we got out there offering uh, access to your, your account. And that was all using old VAX VMS technology for anyone who remembers that, uh, that outdated technology. It was a nice technology, but the security on it was solid, but primitive, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, it was an opportunity to learn security to uh, as you secure connections on the internet and really was help able to help evolve uh, the uh, fi the security program for financial services. But I will say, Ian, after working in that for 10 or so years, it was not terribly fulfilling. It was it was good work. It paid handsomely, sure. but it just it didn't leave me uh, feeling like I was really contributing to society. And having met my wife at work and she and I got married, had a kid. And then I started asking myself, 
is this what I want to be known for? Does my son want to be known, know that his dad is the one that that works in finance? And so that's when the opportunity to go work in healthcare and actually make a difference, I jumped on that opportunity. Yeah, my wife and I both love to travel. We did a lot more of it came along. I'll be very transparent, but uh, we really always enjoyed going uh, traveling, going abroad. So yes, uh, definitely a, a traveler here though, have been much more homebound as we've been raising two boys, uh, 14 oh, yeah. and 16 years old. But in oh. a couple of years when they move on to college, I expect we'll be back seeing Europe and uh, some other ex uh, locales. My wife really enjoys the Caribbean. Uh, I enjoy oh. sitting under a nice umbrella in the Caribbean as she enjoys herself. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, we really, we, uh, when we were first dating, we had an opportunity to go to Maui and uh, really just fell in love with Hawaii and the, the islands there. Really just a fantastic um, lifestyle there. It seemed like the great best balance between uh, what you get here in the United States with uh, kind of that paradise. So would really strongly recommend that for anyone who's considering Maui. But we also had a great time going down to the Caribbean, have been down to Mexico a few times, and would would uh, say that we had some some great times there as well. So uh, for us, it's it's the sun and the beach, but also have had a great time. My wife explored much more of Europe than I've had an opportunity to, but we're hoping to go to as a one of our plans is to definitely tour Italy, uh, catch Rome, and do a whole circuit there in Italy. So that's probably what's next on our radar. So uh, since I joined Carillion back in 2019, I've been part of uh, the hymns, uh, the Virginia hymns, uh, but I joined the board back in 2022 as the communications chair when that position opened up. Yeah. Currently now, though, I, I've, I've moved my way up through to the uh, president role uh, here for 2023 and 2024. Uh, that has been a real exciting position to be in. I will, I will tell you that it getting that whole uh, fall conference put together and getting speakers arranged. That was really a, a, a great experience. The The nice thing about it was that it was it's at Kings Mill, which really is just a fantastic place. So if you're going to go crazy planning a conference, you want to do it at a place like Kings Mill. It was oh, truly yeah. a, a great place. And we had a I think the fall conference last year's fall conference was a real success and one of our highest rated conferences. So I feel like all the hard work really paid off. And I couldn't have done it, frankly, without all the board member support. That really is what's so nice about Virginia Hymns is the community, both at the board and with the uh, with the organization. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Uh, so our uh, CIO, Keith Perry, was a previous president of Virginia Hymns, and Carillion is an organizational affiliate of, of Hymns Virginia, or of Hymns and of the Virginia chapter. And what's nice about that is that that gives everyone, that entitles everyone to a membership with Hymns. And so I will be very transparent. It wasn't something that was top of my mind when I was up in DC with uh, GW, but hearing from other members who were active in Hymns Virginia Hymns spe uh, specifically, uh, I was said, well, why wouldn't I want to look into these resources and these networking opportunities? So it really was that our organization was part of Virginia Hymns, and there were so many compelling opportunities to take advantage of as part of the Virginia Hymns. So that's what got me hooked. And, and I will be very transparent. Uh, when I first joined, uh, there was a, uh, the fall conference was just about to kick off and I want to say two weeks in on the job, they had a spot open up for a q and A. I think it was to lead the, as I recall, the CISO panel. And so without really knowing hardly anyone in HIMS or uh, the other fellow CISOs, I kind of jumped right in there. And that was definitely a, a trial by fire. I, I still think uh, I stumbled over my words on that one, but it was, uh, it was a great chance to really meet everybody to dive right in. That's yes. it. And, so, and I will say what makes it nice is everybody is, you know, as typical of of uh, folks in Virginia and in healthcare. everybody was very warm and welcoming and extremely forgiving as I stumbled over names and titles. But uh, it, yeah, it's been a great experience.
Yeah. So if I had to encapsulate that into a couple key terms, it's about networking, about bringing people together. Like I, th I think that's the the number one for me is an opportunity to talk with your peers and network with your peers. Sometimes we get caught in our own little horse blinders of the company that we work for and our problems. And it's an amazing opportunity to connect with other healthcare professionals doing similar things to you. And then the other, I would say equally as important is an exposure to new ideas, new technologies. Really, that's what HIMS was founded on, was to expose uh, IT professionals to different concepts within different IT concepts. And so I feel that that is also what we do with our special interest groups or our SIGs. You get a chance to, um, I attended a penny uh, from Augusta Health uh, does a data analytics SIG that on any other day I would not have thought would have been that intriguing. It certainly isn't my area of expertise, but having attended that meeting, I learned so much. And it just goes to show you, if you if you expand your horizons and and try out these yeah. different things, you can learn an incredible amount of information. There's so much in healthcare IT that you can learn, and HIMS is a great way to get your foot in that door and explore all these opportunities. Yeah, so you know, National HIMS offers a number of different uh, opportunities to get certifications, but our local HIMS. We have special interest groups where we hold events that I would strongly encourage anyone who's interested to come attend. Even if you're not a HIMSS member, we always have a, an opportunity for non-members to be able to join or to at least attend one of these uh, events. So yeah, right. please come on out and see if it interests you and get to talk to the folks that are there. I think you'll find them warm and welcoming. Uh, it's it's a great chance to see what Virginia Hems is all about, and it's all community driven. This is you know this is not coming down from corporate. This is a no. local chapter that is delivering this content. So you have people that are vested, their their heart and soul are in this, and and it really comes it really shines through when you attend these events and you see people that are there because they want to be, not because their employer requires them to be there or it's for necessarily a CPE credit. No, not really a big sports fan. Yeah. Uh, if I had to pick a football team, I'd say the Ravens, and I'd always just met with scold and derision around here. So I, I don't <laughs> usually offer that up unless they're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, you know we uh we we love our Netflix and. We've watched a few shows. Um, there, there's definitely different cues for different family members. Though interesting, my my boys are less and less interested in the uh, serial TV and more about the YouTube and and some of the and of course all the uh, the gaming. But let's see uh, shows that we've really watched that we found enjoyable. Um, what's one that we finished up recently or that we're in the middle of? Uh, the Crown, I think, is one that like so oh, many yeah. people. I believe I've read that that is the opposite of binge watched. It's, it takes the longest for folks to go through. So we are slowly working our way through uh, the crown. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and we're, we're actually now going through with uh, Amazon Prime. There was a show that was on years ago called Leverage that is, uh, they're offering it back again. It's uh, an interesting idea where it, where a bunch of super criminals get together and they're they're on the side of good now. And so they're helping uh, people out. And so we're we're going back and rewatching Leverage and just really enjoying some of the shows and, and catching a few that we had missed when it originally aired. I'm doing something similar with Stargate SG-1, the original Stargate. Right. My my yeah, wife yeah, and yeah. I, that'll usually be our going to bed program. I'll, I'll put that on and just watch an episode, but that's usually what puts my wife out and <laughs> has us ready for sleep after that. What's well, really interesting to have seen uh, the the years before COVID and then the years after COVID. I will say I think there's been a tremendous transformation due to COVID, and and in some ways very positive, and in some ways maybe less so. Uh, I will say that coming out post pandemic, we really were able to move quickly to get remote work to probably the ten years forward where other industries had gotten comfortable with remote work. 
uh, in, in an industry like healthcare, where many of our clinical workers have no remote work option, it never was really even given consideration as an option for our non-clinical support staff. But then, of course, COVID kind of forced that to uh, come about. And now we have a very successful, I would call it hybrid approach going on at Carillion, where we were able to help senior leadership understand that there is a place for remote work. And we're not necessarily saying every non-clinical worker has to work remote, but it is an option that we should give employees. And we did see employee satisfaction uh, go up as a result. Uh, I would say out of the the downside to some of the, the COVID is the real challenges we've had around reimbursements and travelers and just staffing has been much more challenging in the post-COVID world. So uh, sure. we continue to work on that and, and that is pushing us for, towards efficiencies. So I will say uh, we're everything we do now is with an eye on efficiency and return on investment. And there's many technologies, especially as we're seeing generative AI kind of really bringing a value that, that hey, how can this tool do more than what we were able to do previous. So that's uh, that's been so it's been a real focus on the value creation. Well, certainly remote work, though I don't think that's anything unique to Carillion. But I, sure. I will say I've been so proud of our team and how we've been able to rationalize our. And of course, as the CISO, you're going to hear the security side of this. Uh, of course, we're in tremendously. Uh, I'm tremendously proud of the team for how they've been able to rationalize our tool set and figure out where it makes sense to keep products and services in-house versus using a managed service. And right now, I think we found a really nice balance of of having some things uh, in a managed service environment where the, the managed service is able to handle it while we're either asleep or where it's something that's just their operational responsibilities so my core sure. team can focus on on handling the day-to-day -day cyber activities that come up so i think that's where uh I, i'm super proud of the team is where we've just been able to grow smart and grow uh, efficiently where and bring in services that don't require uh necessarily augmenting staff Oh, interesting. Yeah, well, where is AI a little bit going? Of on the spot, I know. <laughs> well, I like making predictions. Uh, I have a few out there on the internet that I'm still standing behind uh, that, that haven't been proven wrong around quantum computing and blockchain. So mm -hmm. fingers crossed that this will be a solid prediction. I think a large language model AI will continue to evolve that and in a way that will help the clinician around documentation, um, patient communications and interaction, helping assist with that. But I suspect that we're going to find, and this is, this again, put myself out on the line here. I think we'll find that large language model AI, it has a inherent limitation in its design that it will not continue to grow as exponentially as we hoped from a technology perspective. Yes, we'll see it do better and more accurate work, but I don't think we're going to see it become uh, generalized intelligence as some people are hoping that this is the this is the foundation by which we're going to see something that could truly replace a human mind. I I think it's it's fantastic and it's but it's never going to quite get to that point. Now maybe combining LLM with some other technology that's on the horizon, maybe with that, but. The LLM, for anyone that's played with it for uh, an extended period, you start to kind of feel out, here are its limitations, and quickly you realize there are things that it can do beautifully, but only so far. So, uh, and, and as for where I keep an eye on emerging technologies, there are a number of different resources out there on the internet. I happen to really like This Week Health. It's uh, something that uh, Bill Russell has put together. Uh, if you go out and, and you go to thisweekhealth.com, he has him and him and his team have put together a number of wonderful commentaries. He has uh, thought leaders out there, and it is all about health IT. And so I, I can't recommend Bill's team more highly and the podcasts that he produces. So it, my my answer there would be to learn and to network and to uh, become a generalist. Don't, uh, in my opinion, the value 
proposition is in understanding the bigger picture versus getting very focused on one particular firewall technology or data loss protection technology. And in my career, I've seen the firewall brand, the, the best of breed, change names three to four times. And so uh, I, I was one that once carried the Cisco certified security professional. I think it was called the CCSP, which they've since retired, which, yeah. you know, again, things change. And if you stay focused on a, a particular company's technology or stack, it, it'll get you along, but it will not kind of set you up for the long term. So I I personally recommend if your job requires it, of course, specialize, but where you can try to understand how all the tools fit together, understand that what's called the MITRE ATT&CK framework and how each of the tools fit into the MITRE ATT&CK framework to handle an intruder that may have gotten into your environment and can move around through your environment. They call it so-called left of boom. Make sure you understand the tool sets from a uh, completeness if that's where you see yourself if you're if you enjoy understanding the bigger picture i would strongly advise that uh, we we do have interns and uh at one of the nice things about Carillion interns is you get exposure to the real tools in a real world scenario you see how it all comes together so it, it wouldn't be some uh you know it, it's real world experience if you come work for Carillion, even as a uh, in an internship Coffee in the morning, I have to have it for the to caffeine boost, but then by the afternoon, it's green tea. My wife can, tea. got me the, the taste of green tea. I will tell you, it's not not hot. Iced green tea is a okay. uh, is a favorite of mine in the afternoon with a little bit of lemon. But no, coffee in the morning, never was a coffee drinker. I was that Mountain Dew geek uh, that drank yeah. the, uh, but uh, then All I the met my wife. Later. She's a coffee drinker and she got me hooked. And now a nice cup of Kona, uh, no no sugar, no cream, just straight up Kona coffee is is how I start my day, every day. Excellent. Well, again, Rob, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being able to join and do this. You're, you're the first, you're the first one through. Oh, I'm the first. This, so yeah, well, yeah. Good. So yeah, glad to do it, Ian. You, you did an amazing job. Thank you. Uh, this has been great. I uh, really enjoyed having this conversation and sharing thoughts.